Today, we're going to be talking about features from the Format and Tools menu in Google Docs. My name is Rebecca Simons, and welcome to the Educate community. This is the last of our three-part series on Google Docs. Be sure to check out the description below for a timestamped list of all the topics we'll be covering and links to the other parts of this series. Let's kick things off by talking about the format menu. This isn't the most exciting menu, but knowing how to use formatting is what will make your work look more professional and polished. Now, the most common formatting features can also be found as icons in the formatting toolbar. For demonstration purposes today, I'm going to be using a report template from Google's template gallery. Let's start by talking about margins. Margins control how much space appears as a border around your content. Now, by default, margins are always set to one inch all around the document. However, you can easily change this by going to File, Page Setup. Personally, I like to change my margins to half an inch all the way around my document, which allows me more space for content. This was especially important when I was teaching and I had a limit on the number of copies I could make every month. I liked to cram as much information onto one page as possible. Now, because this is the margin I always like to use, I'm going to set this as my default. Additionally, under page setup, you can change the orientation of your page, the size of your paper, and even the background color. Now, currently, these changes are being applied to our whole document. If we were using section breaks, we would be able to apply formatting changes to a specific part of the document instead of wholesale changes. Let me give you an example. By adding section breaks, we can have both portrait and landscape orientation within the same document. As you can see, everything within our document is currently in portrait. However, I'd like to have my choice board on a page in landscape orientation so I can make it bigger. There are two different ways we can achieve this. We can start by going to the insert menu and adding section breaks on either side of our choice board. Or we could simply highlight the choice board, right click, and select change page to landscape. If I go to view and click show section breaks, you can see that section breaks were added on either side of my choice board. If I later decide I don't want my choice board in landscape orientation, I can simply come in and remove my section breaks. To remove them, I simply place my cursor in front of the section break and press function delete. Now, as we look at this document, you'll notice that it mirrors what the content would look like on a printed page, complete with those print margins that we talked about earlier and page separations. However, you now also have the option to use a pageless format. This setup is going to remove features like margins, page breaks, which means you can consume your content without interruptions. This is great when you need to add wide tables, large images, or you don't want to have to worry about your content getting kicked to the next page. To enter this view, you'll simply click on File, Page Setup, and select pageless. Like in the pages view, you can also change the background color of your canvas. While you don't have margins in pageless, you do have a setting called text width, and this controls how much of the canvas your text will fill. To adjust, simply click on view, text width, and select an option from the dropdown. You can also right click in the ruler and adjust text width from here. If you don't have a ruler showing, simply go to view and check show ruler. Now I do wanna mention if you're in a pageless view, you won't have the ability to use certain traditional features such as watermarks, headers, footers, and page numbers. 
Let's move on to the format menu, starting with text. The first three options, bold, italics, underline, are also going to appear as icons in your formatting toolbar. Other options that you'll see here are the ability to strike through your text, add superscripts or subscripts, as well as increase, decrease font size and capitalization options. Next up is paragraph styles. You can customize paragraph styles from the format menu or from the styles drop down in the formatting toolbar. This drop down is an easy way to apply consistent formatting to specific types of text within your document. By default, anything you type in a Google Doc is going to be styled as normal text. To change the paragraph style of any text, simply highlight and select the new style from the drop down menu. Now, I want to take a moment to make an important distinction. Using paragraph styles is different from simply changing how your text looks. While it is a quick way to achieve consistent formatting, its purpose is to improve the navigability of your doc. Let me add a few more paragraph styles to my doc and I'll show you how. I've gone through and added all of the paragraph styles from title all the way down to heading three. Now, anything that I have formatted as a heading is going to appear if I add a table of contents from the insert menu. As you can see, each heading type, heading one, heading two, heading three, indents under the next, creating a hierarchy. Each of these now link to that specific section of the document. In addition, by adding paragraph styles, Docs automatically takes them and creates a document outline in the left-hand sidebar. Again, all of these are links that you can click on to interact with the document. Both of these features not only make your doc interactive, but easier to navigate. Google will provide you with default paragraph styles, but you can easily change them to suit your needs. To change a paragraph style, begin by changing the formatting of your text within your document. This includes the font type, size, and color. While your formatted text is selected, you're going to click on the styles dropdown Choose which style you want to update and select update text to match. This formatting will then become the standard option for my title each time I open a Google Doc. Next up in the formatting toolbar are font options, including type, size, rich text formatting, font color, and highlight color. By default, Docs only displays a few dozen fonts, but Google actually has hundreds more you can choose from. To add additional fonts, click the font dropdown and select more fonts. I personally like to use the filters to help narrow down my choices, my favorite selection to browse being handwriting. Select as many fonts as you want, then click OK to add them to the font menu. Fonts.google.com is another fun resource when you're trying to select a font type. You can type in any text and then preview how it will look in all the available fonts. Next up in the format menu is alignment. Alignment refers to the arrangement of text or other elements in relation to the margins. You have the option to align your text with the left margin, the right margin, or to center your text between the margins. Additionally, Docs provides a justification option where the text is aligned with both the right and left margins, creating an even appearance on both sides. You can align text, images, tables, or other elements. All you have to do is highlight the desired content, then click the appropriate alignment options. The next formatting option is line and paragraph spacing. This refers to the vertical distance between lines of text or between paragraphs in your document. Line and paragraph spacing can be set through the format menu or by clicking the icon in the formatting toolbar. 
Both of these spacing options are useful for improving the readability and the overall appearance of your document. Simply play around with the values to meet your needs and preferences. Next are columns. Columns allow you to divide your document into two or more vertical sections, which helps with organizing or presenting information in a clean, structured way. Uh, personally, if I need to break content up into multiple sections, I prefer to use tables, but I did want to cover this since it's under the formatting options. Next up are bullets and numbers. You can, again, find these under the format menu or the icons for checklists, bulleted lists, and numbered lists. Each of these have a drop-down arrow providing you with additional formatting options. Checklists have become one of my favorite ways to add interactivity to my docs. When I was in the classroom, I used this feature heavily with my students who needed visual reminders or needed their work broken down into discrete tasks. As they completed tasks, they could check it off on their doc. This allowed me to do a quick visual check of their progress as I walked by, and it helped keep them on track. All right, last two things before we move on to the tools menu. I want to cover two keyboard shortcuts that I have found to be absolute lifesavers when I'm working with docs. The first keyboard shortcut allows you to paste content without formatting. I know all of us have some point have copied and pasted into a Google Doc and the formatting looks all weird. And instead of sitting there and trying to go through and fix all of the formatting, you can simply press Control Shift V and paste the exact same content stripped of any formatting. The second keyboard shortcut is one I actually found out about from someone in the Educate community. She had just finished watching one of my make and takes and sent me an email saying, hey, you know, there's a keyboard shortcut that'll let you do what you're doing a whole lot faster. And of course, I got incredibly excited about that. So the shortcut she shared with me was control Y. And what it does is it allows you to repeat your last action. For example, let's say you were going through and you were highlighting similes and metaphors in a poem with your students. I used to have mine do this all the time. So we would start out and we would highlight the text and we would click on the highlighter and we would click on a color. Then we would highlight more text and we would click on the highlighter and we would click on a color. Well, instead of going through that process every time, now on the next simile, all you would have to do is simply highlight and press control Y. And it's going to repeat the last action that you performed, which was highlighting. Now, I know you can do something similar with the paint roller icon in the formatting toolbar, but the paint roller and I struggle to get along even on a good day. So again, that shortcut was control Y and it repeats your last action. All right, moving on to tools that are built into Google Docs. We're going to start with this icon in the bottom right corner, which is known as the Explore tool. The Explore tool is a built-in feature that allows you to search the web without having to leave your workspace. When you enter text in the search field, like digital choice boards, it will bring up related sites from the web, images, and it will also search your drive for any content related to your search item. Let's go ahead and start with the web tab. There are several different ways you can interact with these search results. First, you can click to open the content in a new tab. Second, you can click and drag to add the site as a hyperlink within the doc. Finally, if you're citing or summarizing content, you can quickly cite your source by clicking the quotation mark in the upper right corner which will add a superscript that corresponds to an automatically generated citation in the footnotes. 
The Images tab allows you to search for images without leaving your dock. When you find an image you like, simply click and drag to add it to your dock, or you can click the plus icon in the upper right corner of an image. All inserted images are automatically hyperlinked to their source, so when you click on an image, you'll see a link pop up which allows you to go back to the source. Finally, the Drive tab completes a search of your personal drive and your shared drive looking for any documents that contain the keywords that you put into your search. So these are all of the files that I have in my drive that are associated with digital choice boards. All I have to do is double click to open it in a new tab. This next tool is one that I wish I had had access to when I was writing research papers in school. I can still vividly remember the thick packets my teachers would give us for formatting our citations. Now, Google has a built-in tool that will do all that for you. Not only will it help you keep track of your sources, but it can add in-text citations and create a formatted bibliography. To start adding citations, you're going to click on the Tools menu and select Citations. You can choose from APA, MLA, or Chicago formatting. When you click the plus to add a citation, it'll ask you what type of source you used. For example, I might be citing a book that I have a physical print copy of. By using the ISBN number, Google will automatically pull all the information I need for my citation and fill in the appropriate fields. All I have to do is verify that it has the correct book, click continue, and click add citation source. To add an in-text citation, make sure that your cursor is in the correct location, then hover over your source and click the word cite. Pop-up text will appear if you need to add any additional information, like a page number. Once you're finished, the button insert references will automatically build your bibliography. Next tool is voice typing. Not only can voice typing save you a lot of time, but it has a wide range of applications in the classroom. When I was teaching, I honestly only used this tool as an accommodation, but you could do so much more with it. I really like the idea of using it with elementary students since their typing skills may limit their ability to share their thinking. It could also be used as a lesson to promote awareness of punctuation and sentence structure. To start using voice typing, click on the Tools menu and select Voice Typing. You'll begin by selecting which language you'll be speaking, the default being English. Then click on the large microphone icon. The first time you use this tool, you'll need to enable microphone access. You'll know the microphone is in use if the icon is red, period. Simply click on the icon to stop voice typing, period. You can add punctuation and formatting while you're voice typing by saying commands such as period or comma. The last tool we're going to cover in this video is translating a document. The ability to translate information into a family or student's heart language makes Google Docs such a powerful collaboration tool and promotes equal access. To translate a document, click on Tools, Translate Document. It will then prompt you to name the translated copy and select a language you want to translate it into. While I've heard from native speakers that Google does a fairly good job of translating, just keep in mind that it's not perfect. Thanks for joining us in the Educate community today for the final part in our Google Docs series. I hope the skills you learned today will help you take advantage of all the formatting and tools that Google Docs has to offer. If you're interested in more tips and tutorials on all things EdTech, be sure to check out our channel. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so you'll be notified each time we post new content. See you next time.